Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Let's make some noise if you know that your praise is making room for you. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody, make some noise.
praise is making room for me. You all have to excuse me this morning. That music selection was on my heart. And I know it seems somewhat paradoxical based on everything that we're going through at this very moment, but I truly believe that praisers really do land on their feet and my praise is making room for me. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let Mount Zion rejoice and let the daughters of Judah be made glad. I sought the Lord. He heard my cry and delivered me from all of my trouble. I would have fainted lest I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But I am going to look to the hills from which cometh my help, knowing that my help, hallelujah, it comes from the Lord. So a thousand is going to fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it is not going to come nigh thee. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he continues to do for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. God is still God, even on a bad day. God is still God, even through the vicissitudes of life, through loss, through pain, through disappointment, how a God is still, hallelujah, he's still a mighty God. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, for the king of our glory, the king of glory is coming in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. I need you to understand my brothers and sisters because our God is the greatest power. We shall never be defeated. And let me decree and declare prophetically on the onset of this broadcast that I still believe God, I still believe that this is going to be the bigger, the better, and the greater. I still believe nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing lacking. I still believe that this is going to be the greatest season of our entire lives. So listen, hallelujah. Come on in to the cyber sanctuary. Come join us in this ethereal space. We have carved it out to be sacred where we worship where we praise, where we magnify the name of the Lord. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And we plan on lifting up the name of the Lord on this platform this morning. My praise is making room for me. I believe in miracles. I believe that miracles that God is going to perform, that God is going to wrought, shall not be denied. Hallelujah. Listen, I have a few announcements and I'll make those announcements uh, probably uh, once we've gone through the prayer, but I want us to continue, continue to be encouraged. I want you to continue to be inspired because I Believe that all things are working together for the good to them that love the Lord and them that are called according to his purpose. So listen, as you come on the platform this morning, I need you to be praying. I need you to be joyful. I need you to be celebratory. Yes, yes, I need us to celebrate. We've come too far now to allow anything to distract us and cause us to feel defeated like God does not love us. He's up to something. God is truly, he's up to something. So come on the platform. Uh, I, I wanna do this real quickly. As we go through the rules of engagement, I want you to be very interactive on today. 
All right. So when you come on the platform, I need to know the city and the state that you're watching the program from. That's the city and the state. So I can acknowledge and recognize your presence being with me on today. If I don't acknowledge it, our moderator will acknowledge your presence on the platform today. We are so appreciative that you have joined the Highway Church, also known as the Highway Nation. And trust me, you are going to be blessed on this morning. So that's the city and the state that you're watching the program from. The second rule of engagement, you will see on your screen four social media platforms come up. You'll see Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Now, I need you to use the finger of evangelism or the finger of e, I gotta say, influence to get as many people that you have connected with on those four social media outlets to come join us on this platform this morning and be a part of this worship experience. I would encourage you to please invite as many people as you can to subscribe to the listing page to uh, YouTube channel. That's extremely important. Subscribe to the listing page to YouTube channel. It is my endeavor that you and I collaborate together and we touch the four corners of the globe with the Yuan Gileon, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's extremely important. Now, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you, become a subscriber to the listing page to YouTube uh, uh, channel. Also like the page. So anytime we're broadcasting, you'll get the notifications and alerts. Now, the third rule of engagement, which to me is my most important rule because I need you to be interactive on the platform. Anytime we're not in the physical tactile environment, the comment section or the chat replaces the in-person responses. So I want you to go into the comment section when something is resonating and something makes an indelible impact. I want to see it reflected in the comments in the uh, uh, in that section there, in 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 that private chat, uh, in that chat, I want to see it reflected there. I want you to be as congenial, as affable, as amicable, as friendly, as hospitable as you possibly can. No argumentative, no combative, no cantankerous dispositions. I want us to love each other. Because God is love and we can't say we love God and we don't respect or love each other. So that's very important. Those are the rules of engagement. And in my humble opinion, if you would consider just embracing those rules, it's going to do nothing but heighten your enjoyment on this platform this morning. All right. Now, listen, the Bible says that we should always pray that we should always be eager to pray. We should always pray and not get weary, not get faint, uh, not lose heart. But those who pray should expect a miracle and the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, we believe it avails much. Jesus frequently went apart. He separated himself from his disciples. Those who he was instructing, the Talmudim, the Talmudim, Greek word for students, disciples, he would go apart to pray and seek the face of the Father. And I believe, my God, this is a season that we need to seek the face of the Father like never before. I believe this is a season that we're going to constantly have to employ prayer. God, we need you like never before. I believe that, I, I, I believe like never before that we, oh God, we're going to need to be energized by the power of God that comes through intercessory prayer. Now today, we're praying 
in particular for the Page family. We're praying for my family, uh, my my brother's family. In in number one, my my bishop Darren Page, uh, Lady Deborah Page, Fallon, uh, Deanna, Dd. Uh, uh, Abigail Lawrence, my mother and father, Bishop Page Sr., uh, Dr. Hazel R. Page, my pa we're, we're praying for my entire family on this morning, uh, as we are still trying to deal with this tremendous tragic loss. Uh, we still have not yet been able to wrap our heads around it. We're going through this. As, as as much as we possibly can. We're trying to find comfort with each other, but more importantly, we're finding, finding comfort through your prayer and in our relationship with the Lord. So I want you to pray for our family. Continue to pray for the Moses family, the Smith family, Chestnut family. Please pray for the McDowell family, uh, the McFadden family. We're praying for every one of our members that have gone through surgery and have come through our Deacon Eric Flewellen, our brother Caleb, our mother Reels. We're praying for the entire Highway Church family. Anyone that extended family, uh, our cyber church family, we're praying for you and we're believing God on your behalf. So it's very important. It's critical that we get into the face of God. Satan would like to keep us uh, somewhat uh, despondent and keep us oppressed and depressed emotionally uh, and, and mentally, psychologically, but we come against that 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 spirit is is part of life. It's natural progression when you lose something. You're gonna you're gonna go through those type of emotions. But we believe God. We must trust God. We are asking God today to rest, rule, to abide, to permeate throughout this platform, even as we minister on today. You don't want to miss our 12 noon service, our in-person service. You do not want to miss that at 12 noon. And you also don't want to miss tonight when we're on the platform at seven o'clock. All right. I'm going to believe God. We have a word. There is a word. It's going to be outstanding. And I don't want you to miss being with us all day today on the platform. All right. Now I'm going to pray because I believe that God, God is with us. Hallelujah. I feel him so strongly this morning. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. God, I feel, I feel a peace. I feel your presence. I, God, I, I, I know you and I know that you have not abandon us. You have not left us to ourselves. You are near and you're, you're near to those that will just call on you, that cry out to you. God, I'm asking you now that you bless families that are going through the valley and the shadow of death. God, I'm asking you to comfort those with a comfort and give them a peace that will, oh my God, transplant I mean, them into your joy. A, a, a peace that will surpass also all understanding. A, a, a peace that will guard, hallelujah, their hearts and their minds. Spirit of the living God, I need you to minister minister to our needs on today, Father. Father, snatch us up, snatch us out of, pull us through anything that is contradictory 
to your word and to your personage, spirit of the living God. We want to thank you in advance for what we know you're going to do. God, this is a rough place. This is a hard place, but we all can make it. If you're our paracletus, if you walk with us, if you stand by us, if you be by our side, God, we can make it. We decree and declare, Father, that we know that there is no weapon that can be formed that's going to prosper. But God, we feel the warfare. We feel the weapons being formed against us. And we need you to stand. Hallelujah stand strong in us. God, we are going to lift you up and we need you to rise so all of our enemies shall be scattered on this morning. Spirit of the living God, minister to the hearts of your people. Let a word be spoken this morning that will break up fallow ground. Let a word be spoken this morning that energizes, that edifies, that resuscitates, that revives your people. God, let a word be spoken today that changes the trajectory of somebody's life. Spirit of the living God, we're going to thank you. We're going to praise you at all times. And God, give us the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God, we believe you today. We believe that you're going to heal. You're going to deliver. You're going to set forth free. And God, we thank you now. We thank you in advance. Oh, God, we thank you in advance. Go, oh, God, we thank you in advance. Nothing broken, nothing missing, and nothing lacking. We thank you in advance. And knowing you the way that I do, what I pray, what I decree, what I declare, it's come to pass. It's done now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Listen. Oh God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. On the platform this morning. Listen, our scripture text, we continue in Psalm 35. I'll skip throughout the whole chapter, 28 verses. I've asked you to commit a few of the verses to memory. And I need you to follow those instructions. But it is the first division of Psalms, the 35th chapter. And this is how it reads, the prayer for deliverance. <laughs> the vindication from my enemies, a prayer, a beseeching, a lamenting from David. Lord, <laughs> fight those that fight against me. Contend, O oh Lord, with those that contend with me. Take hold of shield and buckler. Hallelujah. And right, God, I need you to rise up and help me. Don't let the sun smite be my day, nor the moon by night, but God, rise up. Hallelujah. Rise up and help me. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I hear the Lord saying, help is on the way. Help is on the simple word, but powerful declaration that I make to you today that help is on the way and I speak it prophetically. Help is on the way. Hear me, draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers uh, because my pursuers, it's my pursuers, my pursuers, <laughs> my pursuer think they've got me between a rock in a hard place, but you say to my soul, 
Let my soul know that you are my salvation, that you are my deliverer that I can trust in you, that I can lean on you, that I can depend on you. Oh, God, help me that you're leading me by your hand, that the favor of God is resting upon me. Let me know the help is on the way because you've energized me. You've touched me. Oh, my God. You have, you've anointed. You've inspired. You've encouraged. You've edified me. Oh, God, let them be put to shame, my God. Let the enemy be put to shame. Are y'all hearing me? Shame the devil. Shame him. Shame him. He seeks after my peace. He seeks after my mind. He seeks after my joy. He seeks after, oh, my God, my family. He's after. He's after my future. He seeks after my life, anything that I am connected to that brings me life, the enemy is seeking after it. He seeks after my life. Let the enemy, let them be confounded. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let them be, let them be, let them be, let them be turned back and confounded. Turn the enemy back. Let them be confounded. And those who devise evil against me, let their way be dark. Let it be dark. Oh God, I said, I'm preaching right now. Let them be dark. Let the ways of the enemy, let their ways be confounded and let their ways be dark and slippery. They devise, they come up with strategy. They come up with a plot, but you, my God, hallelujah, by your power, let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Take up the buckler and the shield. Let their way be dark and slippery. Confound them, confound them, confound them, confound them, confound them, and the net and the snare and the pit that they have dug for my life, let them fall into it. Let their lies, let their plot, let their agenda, let it, my God, let it be confounded by your power. Then the soul shall rejoice. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord. I need you to put in the comment section, it's time to rejoice. Come on, put it in there. It's time to rejoice. Don't be afraid. Come on, put it in there. It's time to rejoice. Come on, put it in the comment section. It's time to rejoice. Well, that's Psalm 35, several verses, verses one through it, including number seven. And that's my commentary. I need you to continue to lift up that chapter because it's going to bless you. Psalm 35. Well, listen, um, I've prepared uh, through the media ministry a uh, presentation I want to honor my niece on today, uh, Amber L. Page. I want to honor her with the media presentation. And this song speaks the sentiments of my heart today. All right. So I want you to listen. I want you to watch. I want you to enjoy. And once it has concluded, I'll be back uh, with the word from the Lord on today. I'm, I'm going to be preaching out of the book of Philippians. And I want to talk about the theology of hope. We must have hope. The theology of hope. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Music ministry. Come bless us. Media ministry come, bless us, and I'll be right back.
Rescue me, Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive the sin and I will heal the land. I wanted to dedicate that today to my beloved niece, who I love dearly, uh, and to uh, our family uh, on this morning, all right? Um, also, we will be celebrating her life on this coming Friday, June 17th. Uh, the viewing will begin at uh, three o'clock, three to seven, and the service of celebration will begin uh, that night at seven o'clock as well. Uh, it will be held at uh, the Mother Church, the Greater Highway Deliverance Ministry, uh, 132 East 111th Street in Manhattan, uh, where my father is the pastor. So uh, you that can make it, I'm going to uh, look for you to be there. If not, please keep our family uh, in prayer uh, this week. It has been a trying, difficult time, but I need you uh, to keep us in prayer. I want us to look this morning at uh, Philippians chapter number one. And I got so caught up in the presentation, I didn't turn my Bible to it. So y'all forgive me today. Um, Philippians chapter number one, one verse I want to uh, underscore on today, and I may skip through um, the book of Philippians some and I'll give different biblical references 
from other passages of scripture, but the foundational text is Paul's letter to this church, this Greco-Roman church, this Greco-Roman society here in Philippians chapter one. And um, I want to underscore one verse as I forestated, and that would be verse number 21 where it says, for to me, living is Christ <laughs> and dying is gain. To live is Christ, but dying is gain. And it's, you know, death is one of those things that it, it, it is a transport to the believer something much greater. But as we try to rationalize what goes on in life, when we try to wrap our minds around what's going on, what is God doing? If, if you try to dissect it, you're going to be extremely disappointed and you're going to be far away from contentment. Peace will elude you when you're trying to figure out the ways of God. You're going to have to trust him because our minds, our thoughts, our agenda, our Oh God, our plans are not God's plans. Our minds are not God's minds. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. I think the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55, verse eight and nine, when he presents this, of course, he's talking about an exilic people or a post-exilic people or maybe a post exilic people, pre-exilic, exilic, post. Maybe what he's saying is through all of the stages that they would experience, they would not understand the ways, the thoughts or the mind of God. We are very finite in our thinking while God is infinite. Even God tried to explain to us what he was doing, if he tried to, and he does through his word, we still remain confused because of the infancy of our minds compared to the intelligence and the knowledge of God. What God is doing in our lives is like a billion piece puzzle. Therefore, it takes God himself, it takes God, it takes his spirit, it takes his anointing to put it together, but we can do, oh my God, but we, 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 we can, we can do and serve God better when we put our hopes in Christ. The theology of hope, we must know that he, oh my God, touches us in every area of our lives. And because I'm the apple, hallelujah, of God's eye, God does not want to do anything to harm us, but he must allow us to evolve and to develop and to grow and to mature but we gotta trust that God is going to take care of us. In the first chapter of this book, Philippians, Paul states emphatically, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He's paraphrasing, it would be better, hear me, it would be better for me Oh God, 
if I would go to be with the Lord. But it's better for you if I stay. Because I can teach you more about God. But I want you to know if I stay, it's all about him to to live, to live is Christ, but to die is, is, is gain. To live is Christ, to die is gain. My living, me, me, me pressing and moving forward and pushing back. The, the emotions, the pain, the the the, the hurt, the the disappointment, the, the, the sadness. It's, it's not about being strong and and and, and being a superman, uh, trying to show resilience. No, for me to live now is Christ. It's not about my ambitions. It's not about anything that the world has to off of me. It's not about preaching all over the world. It's, it's not about uh, living an elaborate, palatious lifestyle. It, it's, it's, it's not about silver or gold. It's not about the applause of men. It's all about, at this point, the mission of Christ. And you find out when you're this close to loss and death and disappointment that it must be about Christ. And I think the theology of hope falls in line with Paul's incredible perspective on life in the kingdom, regardless of the situation and circumstance, because Paul is teaching us that it is not the circumstances of life that ought to drive believers, but rather their purpose, what should keep you in the proverbial game of life is the purpose. I'm here, oh God, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for something that's greater than me. I'm here, I'm here as the linchpin, as the catalyst possibly to destroy generational curses and to bring into generational salvation. I may be here as the model and the context for other people to follow. If I die, yes, it's gain, but for me to live, oh, Shabandi, oh, Shata, for me to live is Christ. It's all about Christ. And it's interesting that Paul articulated in this epistle both the glory and the necessity of suffering on behalf of Christ. Hear me now. He, he, he articulates, he verbalizes what it is to suffer. He, he attempts to, oh my God, to express. He's, he's, he's not being overly bombastic and he's not blofiating. He is, he is really trying to postulate, hear me, that humility, the humility, the humility that all of us need, that you and I must embrace his first model for us on the behalf of Christ. Christ does it on the behalf of us. Oh, y'all better hear me. He, 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 he says to the believer that, that, that Christ shows humility through the incarnation. He that knows no sin becomes sin. Paul said that we learn humility not by commandment, but by an example. I'm going to say that again. We learn how to go through the vicissitude of life. We learn how to embrace challenge and change and conflict and paradoxes by the models and the examples of other. We don't just learn it from the commandment. We don't just learn it by reading the Bible. We learn it by watching how others embrace life's unforeseen challenges. God doesn't simply, oh God, tell us to humble ourselves. God 
became man. Oh God, he, he takes off divinity and becomes humanity. That's, that's, that's that low Christology, that divinity, high Christology. He takes off divinity. He takes off his godness and shows us what humility looks like. Paul also posited that while humanity is, is necessary to live, or uh, 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 rather humanity, our uh, humility laced through humanity is necessary. Oh God, help me teach it. To live a harmonious life in alignment with God. It is also the key to exaltation. The opposite of humility is pride, and it comes before destruction. Lord, I feel like teaching here Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse number 18. Pride, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Paul was actually actually dealing with humility as an antidotal characteristic. It is a part of the believer's makeup. Humility should be in the believer's DNA. Humility should be in your myochondria. You should walk in constant perpetual humility. Humility is the characteristic that precedes the ability to handle whatever circumstance comes our way. You want to learn how to deal with life? There must be, there must be humility. There must be the absence of pride. Trouble will have a way of crushing pride. Oh God, loss has a way of showing you how frail we are. As a man, as a woman, we don't ask God why he allows us to go through certain things. We should think to ourselves why God wouldn't allow us to go through certain things. Everybody else has gone through it. Everybody else has experienced some level of law. Why not us now? Why not us feel the pain? Why not us experience the loss? Apostle Paul is teaching us how crisis commitment and contentment with the incarnation allowed him not to make a reputation of being God, but to simply take on the form of a bondservant. What discipline, what, what deference and responsibility Christ demonstrated as he humbled himself and became man. Oh God, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Jesus never stopped being God for the Bible says that the word became flesh. The word became flesh. In the Greek meaning that Christ became something that he was not. He simply, he simply veiled the flesh, veiled, veiled his divinity. He veiled himself of his divinity and walked out his life as a man in Powered by the Holy Spirit, embracing the theology of hope. I need you to hear me. Though Christ didn't have a damn nature because he was born, he was virgin born through Mary by the Holy Spirit, he still had, watch this, free will and just like Adam chose to sin against the will of God, Jesus chose not to sin against the will of his father, God. He put himself in a position to die a vicarious. 
carry his substitutionary death for you and me. For him to do this, it had to be a theology of hope. He had to put, oh God, our interests and concerns before his own. Think about this. Jesus was the law of God personified. And he allowed himself to take on our sin in order to redeem us who broke the law. That's a level of debasement and humiliation that we know not of because that's also a love to deep my God to comprehend. I think I'm starting to feel it though. Starting to somewhat understand it that you can love something so deep. Oh God, help me. You can love something so strong until you're willing to die for it. Paul acknowledged to the Philippian church that his life was being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and the service of the faith of the Philippian church. He said, I am your sacrifice. I am, I'm the one that serves as the model, the example. I'm being poured out. I'm being poured out. I'm emptying myself like God emptied himself into divinity. I am emptying out myself, my God, as a service of faith. Oh God, and, and, and he was glad, he was glad, he was happy, he rejoiced with them because of their walk with Christ, he said, because I am your drink offering, because I make this sacrifice is going to strengthen your walk with Christ. This, this hard place that we're in now, oh God, help me teach it. This, this difficult place that we find ourselves in now, oh God. God, this paradox that we are experiencing emotionally now is supposed to draw us closer to God. I don't know how, I don't know how, but some way it brings us closer to God. It gives us Oh, Shabandi, oh, Taba. It gives us some, some level of resolve. And Paul, Paul is demonstrating for us in the statement that just as Christ died for us, did it for us, we must do it and be willing to sacrifice ourselves for others. Paul understood that the beauty of the sacrificing of one's life for the sake of others coming to know God, oh my God, is something that is life-changing. Paul, he writes this letter, he writes this epistle with a real sense of appreciation for what God had done for him while he was in chains. See, what's powerful about this epistle to the church at Philippi, he is in prison. Oh, God, help me teach it. He is in chains. Can you appreciate what God has done for you when you have lost a job, a loss, a promotion, a loss, a relationship, loss, a loved one in death. Can you appreciate what God has done for us when we get bad, tragic news? When we get a diagnosis of physical ailments taking over our body, our health now is compromised, our 
our mental health is 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 challenged to the point where oh God, there's a possibility that we will never have mental stability again. Oh God, can we still give God? praise? Can we still appreciate God when we get all of these negative reports? When they're going through, when we're going through spiritual foreclosure, oh God help me, when our hope is being bargained, can we still trust God? Can we appreciate God regardless of the circumstance. Paul appeared to be, based on the writing, extremely appreciative while being in prison. Can you maintain your appreciation in the prison of loss? in the prison of disappointment in the prison of hopelessness oh don't 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 act like you haven't experienced it can 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 you can you appreciate god in 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 a fractured domestic relationship can can you appreciate god when money has been compromised when your lifestyle a peace is challenged, and it seems as though you're, you're dealing with Eurocladin type winds. Can you trust God then? I, I, Paul is in prison, and yet he was concerned because he was aware of the condition of the church in Philippi. To me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. I'm living to help you. I'm living as an example for you. To die would be far much better. He was concerned. He was concerned about them. He he was alerted. He was, he was told about the potential potential of doctrinal indifferences that were coming from the Judaizers, which Paul referred to as dogs because they were attempting to ravish the church because they didn't have any real, real place. They had no real positioning. Oh God, they came in to infiltrate the peace of the Gentiles that had embraced Christianity. You better hear me, Paul. Paul was called, called to tell the Judaizers that you are nothing more than mutilators of the flesh because they were trying to add these Judaistic practices such as circumcision. They were trying to put more yokes of bondage on the believer, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of the yoke of bondage that comes from legalistic believers is that you're not supposed to mourn, you're not supposed to suffer, you're not supposed to cry, you're not supposed to weep, but the devil is a liar. Nothing, nothing is wrong with showing raw emotions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver us out of them all. It's nothing wrong with acknowledging Acknowledging my heart is broken right now. Oh my God, weeping endures for a night. Joy comes in the morning, but before the joy can come, there must be a weeping. There must be a crying. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. There must be an acknowledgement. God, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. And many legalistic believers live outside the realms of reality. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I strongly believe, and I've come to this resolve since last Sunday, that a test, a test is going to come to every one of our lives that is going to challenge what we believe. Oh, God, can I teach it? A faith that can 
cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. You cannot say you trust God and your faith is not pushed to the limit. I trust in God. I've got faith in God because when I've gone through, he's always been there. Oh, Shabandi Otabaya. Hallelujah. He's always been there. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. That doesn't mean I haven't felt abandoned. It doesn't mean I haven't felt lonely. It doesn't mean I haven't been overwhelmed with emotion. It doesn't mean that I haven't cried. It doesn't mean that I don't feel hurt. It doesn't mean that I'm not disappointed. I'm troubled on every side, but I'm not in distress. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed because I got a treasure in this earthen vessel. But if I didn't have the treasure, if I didn't know God the way I know God, if I didn't trust God the way I trust God, I would have thrown in the towel. I would have fainted lest I believe the sea, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The whom shall I be afraid when my wicked, the enemies, my foe, death comes to eat up my flesh. Death will stumble and fall. Though death encamps itself against me, in this will I be confident. For one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Death is around me, but I will seek the Lord. Oh God. Oh, oh time on the ocean. I'm going to seek God. There must be a theology of hope. I need you to hear me. Paul warned them against the Judaizers, and then he warned them of another group called the Epicureans. The Epicureans of him stated that God, oh God, help me, was nothing but pleasure. The Epicureans were pleasure seekers who looked only for satisfaction in, in the, the natural, temporal, tactile world. They, they, they saw pleasure and financial gain would bring them peace. They thought it would bring them satisfaction with God, but you and I know that there are things that we face in life that money cannot buy. Oh God, if I had, if I had all the money in the world, I would spend it now just to, to, to change this situation. If I had all the, the, the access to finance that I, that, that I had control, if I had influence that I could use to buy, to buy life out of death, if I could, if I could stave off death, I would do it, but I can't. That's the Epicurean. See, we, we discover, we discover in, 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 in this, this prison epistle that Paul writes to the church at Philippi that, 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 that something, something, something about balance is important. We discover in this epistle, not, not just a, 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 a doctrinal treaty, but we, we see a well balanced writing, a well balanced Pin, but a well, oh my God, we see also a well-balanced man. Paul demonstrated that his worldview was impacted by his theology. And his theology was one from above, not from below. Y'all ain't gonna see nothing. He had a high theology, not a low theology. He 
didn't understand God based on circumstances and situations in life. He understood God by the revelation that God gave him of himself despite the circumstances of life. Paul received his attitude total clues from heaven. He declared that our citizenship is in heaven. So we should put our trust not in the power of economics, not in the power of human government, not in the power of a Abilities that personal gifting and talent, not in wealth, but we put our power and our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we eagerly anticipate as we stand in faith through hope until the time will come that we are transformed from the lowly bodies into a glorious body and subdue all things under himself. Oh God help me Jesus. We 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 have to have a high theology. It's called the theology of hope. It must be hope. There must be confidence in God. I hope, I trust, I hope, I trust, I expect, I trust, I trust, I expect, I hope in God. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I trust in God and I lean not to my own understanding. Standing. Oh, help me, Jesus. I acknowledge God in all of my ways and he will direct my path. I trust in God. It must be a high theology. Hope, 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 hope. Paul's theology, Paul's theology. Of hope. It's a theology. It's a theology that has motivated him to participate in the joint sufferings with Christ. Oh God, oh God help me teach him. Anytime there is a theology of hope, you become a joint partner. You collaborate with God in suffering, in hope through your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, being conformed to his death, which means Paul would suffer with him as he identified with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Paul believed that the rabbinic statement of Christ that a servant is not above his master, nor a student above his teacher. Did y'all hear what I said? If my master went through it, me as the student, I've got to go through it. If Jesus Christ modeled for me what it felt like to lose and to suffer and to feel pain, I've got to feel it. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. God knows what I feel because he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. No greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. He knows now the emptiness that Liston Page is experiencing. He knows the heartache that Liston Page feels. He knows the disappointment that Liston Page is walking through right now. He knows, he knows, he knows. He knows I'm being pulled emotionally. He knows what I feel. Why? Because the student must experience what the teacher has gone through. Jesus said, oh God, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. If they persecute me, they're going to persecute you. 
So what Jesus said, he said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to experience it. And you get by. No, 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 no. Same thing I felt emotionally. You got to feel. Oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. Paul, in the book of Philippians, in this Philippian jail, his joint suffering, he views as a glorious opportunity to identify with the person of Jesus. Oh, that I may know him. Oh, God. In the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, God. It's amazing. We don't know what God allows for us to go through that we may get to know him. Oh, God, help me teach this thing. Oh, that I might know him. In the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, it's amazing what God will walk with us through in order for us to know what it feels like to be in collaboration with him. Jesus is on a cross. He said, Eli, Eli, lay my side, Bethany. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. That's where I am today, saints. That's where the man of God is today. And I believe some of you are right there with me. Our arms are stretched out and our heads are in the nape of our necks. And we're saying, Eli, Eli, lay my side, Bethany. God, why? Why have you forsaken me? I can't, I can't feel you. I, I can't, I don't quite know if you're there. I trust you, but I don't always know that you're there. Oh, Tamandi, oh, Shakataya. Oh, God, I'm crying. I don't always know that you're there. Are you there, God? Are you, are you really there, God? Are you there? I'm, I'm trying to feel you. I, I, I need this comfort, but why have you forsaken me? Because the master, the master models for us what the student must go through. You got to hear me. You got to hear me. Jesus makes the rabbinic statement that the servant is not above the master. Everything the master will experience. I've got to go through. I got to go through. Oh, that I may know him. I may know him. In the fellowship. In the fellowship, in the fellowship. Hold that I may know him in the fellowship of his suffering. I may know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Paul was assured that because of his willingness to suffer, hear me, suffer with Christ, he knew that he would also reign in the power of resurrection. Oh, that I may know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Oh God, that I may experience the power of your resurrection. He, he, he knew that if he could lay down his life with Jesus, then that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Lord, I feel like teaching the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus. He knew it would quicken. It would resurrect him. Can I talk to you? It would quicken his mortal body and it would give him life. Paul was inspired by his theology of hope to press toward the mark for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul was concerned, my God, about winning that prize. I've got to win that prize. He demonstrated that he was a hopeful thinker. He had an anticipation and that hope, that anticipation majored in what I call 
soul hope theology or the theology of hope Paul's hallelujah Paul's theology who oh God of hope framed his mindset and mentality which overrode his circumstances and situation who am I encouraging today with this word is it just for me Abakel, are you feeling me on this morning it takes a different mindset it takes a resolve it takes grit in your craw it takes someone with laser focus it takes a different type of mentality to override circumstances and situations i don't know who god's got me preaching this sermon to this morning but i need you to continue to let hope live oh god i feel like jesse jackson keep hope alive you got to breathe life back into your theology of hope. You've come too far now to give up. No, 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 no. Though we walk through the valley in the shadow of death and we fear no evil, that's because of hope theology. Who am I talking to? We gotta pull ourselves together we gotta rise, we gotta rise above it. Paul's theology of hope is the shaping of mental fortitude. It's the empowering of a different type of mentality. It creates an attitude of rejoicing. It creates a resolve that causes us to be gentle in a harsh, cruel world. Through, through prayer, through this theology, prayer, prayer, prayer brings us into a space of relax rather than a space of worry. A theology of hope guarantees Tease us peace. A peace that doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. How oh God, and I don't want I, I, I don't I don't I don't want you. I don't want you to think that it's gonna make sense. This this peace is not gonna make any sense. This this peace, oh God. God, this peace is not hard. It's, 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 it's not easy rather to embrace. This peace is hard. This is a peace, oh God, that's greater than any cognitive understanding or knowledge. This is a peace. It's a peace. It's a peace. It's a peace from time to time that almost eludes you. It becomes, oh my God, so transitory. It, it, it's a peace that you don't always feel. Feel, but oh God, when it's there, when it's there, it strengthens you for the next moment that you may break down because you're going to have moments of emotional breakdown where you're going to cry, where you're going to feel abandoned, where there's going to be brokenness. But every now and then, when that brokenness comes, and it's going to come, that peace that makes no sense envelops, it puts its arms around you, that, that peace, it settles your spirit. Oh my God, it's a peace. It's a peace that even when you're crying, when the tears are falling out of your eyes, it is a peace, it is a peace, it is a, it's a peace. Oh my God, and every single believer, you are going to have to experience in order to call yourself a real student. You are going to have to experience, if you're going to experience being what it is to be a disciple, a peace, a peace, that you have to surrender yourself 
yourself over and say, Father, I don't know what to do, but I'm putting my life in your hands. It's a piece of theology of hope. I need you today to be encouraged. You cannot rationalize everything you experience. If you try to understand the ways of God, you're going to always be disappointed. You have to trust him. And you're gonna to have to say, if, if I die, it's gain. But if I live, it's got to be about Christ. He's left us here to walk this thing out through example. Show them, Paul. Show them, saint of God, what a believer looks like when they're conflicted with life. Model what conflictions of life look like by walking with them with peace, not painless, but with peace, not, oh God, robotic, but with a theology of hope. Tell them, show them, oh God, that I have got to get to know him through suffering, oh, that I may know him, but also, oh, that I will experience the power of resurrection. I don't know who this was for today. Maybe it was just for me. Maybe I'm just preaching. Maybe this is therapeutic for me. But every person today, I want you to come to this cyber altar of hope. The theology, the theology of hope. I need you today. Trust God. Lord, we thank you for another Sunday opportunity to come to sacred space, to worship you, to magnify you to sit and hear your word. We embrace the theology of hope. We, we, our hope is built on nothing less. But Jesus Christ is righteous. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus name, on Christ the solid rock. I stand all of the ground Sinking, say, oh God, I trust you. I depend on you. Help our broken hearts. Lift the burdens. Destroy the yokes. Oh God, help us. Help us this week. It's going to be rough. It's going to be taxing. But help us this week, God. Save, heal, deliver Set free. Inspire your people today. Knowing you the way I do, what I pray, what I've taught, what I preached, the seed that I planted into the soil of their spirit, knowing you the way that I do is going to produce and it is going to come to pass. Every word that I spoke is coming to pass. It's done now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, listen, hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel your presence. Lord, I feel your presence today. Listen, I want to challenge every person today with your tithe and your offering. You'll see come up on the screen the four ways to give. I want you to be a faithful steward today of your tithe and your offering. Four ways to give. Cash app, dollar sign, highway 371. 
Givelify Highway Church Zell, the Highway Church 371 at gmail.com, PayPal, Highway Church. Those are the four ways to give. Tithe is an act of stewardship. I want you to bring the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And see, will I not open the window of heaven for the blessing that you will not have room enough to receive? Tithe 10 cent out of every dollar that you earn. You bring that to God. But I'm asking you to give a $100 offering on today. If you love your leader, you trust your pastor, you trust this cyber voice that you sign on to listen to every Sunday morning. Sunday night, Wednesday and Friday. I want you to meet my challenge on today. A $100 gift to the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I love this ministry. I love this church. I, oh, you're already giving. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Done with the green check mark. Done with the green check mark. I want to see you so. Our moderator will acknowledge you on today for your liberal giving. Generosity is the seed for more. The liberal soul shall be made fat. So sparingly, give sparingly, you get back sparingly. It's called the law of reciprocity. You give cheerfully, give bountifully, you shall reap or receive back bountifully. I need you to be a blessing to the ministry on today. Don't, don't feel any pressure. You don't have a hundred dollar seed. Sow the best seed you can. Give the best offering that you can on this morning. Don't forget tonight, seven o'clock, we'll be here on the platform. Our one hour power, our Sunday night encounter. You don't want to miss it. You also do not want to miss our 12 noon in-person worship. You still have time to get there. We still have time to be there together. Still get there, 12 noon. It is going to be power pack, spirit filled on today. Uh, just be there to lend us your strength on today. Also, Monday night prayer, seven to eight. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Dr. Alan Walker normally hosts their call. I want to see you Monday night, Tuesday through Saturday. We have our noonday national prayer call that's normally hosted by Elder Frank Adams. I want to see you on that prayer call on this week. And of course, our Friday night encounter. We're not quite sure how we're going to do that yet because this coming Friday night, we are also going to be having the celebration of life for my niece, Amber Page. You, you don't want to miss it. Visitation begins at three o'clock to seven o'clock. Service will begin at 7 p.m. It's going to be held at the Greater Highway Deliverance Temple, 132 East 111th Street, New York, New York. Okay, if you can come, I want you to be there. Be there to celebrate her life, but also be there to lend your strength in your prayers to our family in this time of grief and loss. All right. The Lord be with you. Have a smile upon you is my prayer. Again, I want to thank you for all of your, all of your texts, all of your calls, all of your concern. I want to thank you. You are the greatest people on the face of the earth. And remember, God will give his best to those that give their best to him. I'll see you shortly at 12 noon. i see you tonight, seven o'clock. And i see you this week on the platform. God bless. Have a safe travel to the temple, but have a more wonderful and prosperous day. God bless. Come on, wherever you are. I want you to declare that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice. Day that the Lord has.
Oh, oh, oh. 